Greetings everyone and welcome back to Frostgrave and of course to Going Medieval where in the last episode Beatrum and Alacram set up this uh, humble village well uh, probably more of a hamlet really with only one house and Beatrum soon joined them and the remains of the uh, following fight as uh, Beatrum's previous companions weren't uh, ready to let go of them just yet is the, the body that's currently being eaten by a polecat uh, which will hopefully also uh, the rest of it at least be uh, burnt up on the pyre over there. Now, in the at the end of the episode, I listed out a couple of things that we need to get done. Some of them as a high priority because we're already over halfway through winter. Uh, winter will last until day 12. We're already on day 8, so we're two-thirds through. Now, the most important thing to get set up for me is to get a proper cellar going so we can store all of our food. Uh, further to that, then, we need a place for our characters to observe their religion, their religious practices, rather. Uh, both of them are currently Oak Brethren uh, believers, so that shouldn't be too hard. We only need to do one, uh, make a single temple for now. But the final thing is something that I didn't really even touch on in the last episode, and that is research. Now... If I put this outside, it's going to be very, very slow going, but at least it'll be going. So let's just pop down a little research bench there. Further to that, there are a couple of improvements that I think we can make as well in so far as all of the uh, storages that we've got. Currently, we're storing everything in this tiny little room over there, and that's really not that good. So instead, I want raw materials brought outside. Now, the thing about raw materials, uh, let's actually turn, oh, I'll turn the roof off in a second. Uh, let's turn that roof off there. Uh, we're on this. Oh, there we are. Uh, raw materials, they don't really decay very quickly. Like, stone is never going to decay from being outside, likewise with clay. Uh, st uh, sticks and, and wood will, but they'll decay very, very slowly. The main thing is that uh, these things can go outside and it doesn't really matter if they will break down across the course of a year. We'll probably use them up before then. So having that outside will also enable our peeps to go and collect the various materials that have been just left around the map, which I would quite like to be brought in if possible. In fact, we've got a couple more materials over here as well. So let's uh, go ahead and then do that. What is this? Is this limestone? It is clay. Uh, you know what? Clay is fine. We'll bring in some clay as well. I'll set these up to be brought in. We've got a couple more twigs over there. There we go. That'll all do quite nicely. We'll get all of that brought in and hopefully be available then for the construction. Now, to build a cellar, we're going to do that one first. As I'm not really sure if building it in the winter will mean that it'll kind of get a... a a, a boost to being cold first before spring and summer arrives but just assuming that it does we'll go ahead and do that now we're going to need about i think it's three tiles for the stairs so we don't need to do this too much three tiles there then another block then another three tiles down the reason why i'm going three tiles down i could in fact go a, a little bit further but the reason to go three tiles down is that you want, uh, sorry, uh, two um, layers down, I should say, uh, is that you want to be mindful of what you have above your cellar. Just building a cellar directly underneath a room, which is going to be kept warm, for example, a kitchen, might be very tempting because it's the kitchen and you probably want to go, go down to the cellar from the kitchen nice and quickly. But the kitchen is going to be warm. And if the only thing between a warm room and your cellar is whatever floor you've built, which is going to have imperfect insulation, your cellar is going to be warmed up by the proximity to, to that warm room. So we're going to go down an extra layer and have an entire layer of natural material between them. Natural materials tend to be quite uh, good in terms of insulation. Also, natural floors are particularly good. The game, from what I understand, kind of, uh, well, gamifies the way that uh, temperatures are calculated in this way by having that any floor increases the temperature underground and natural tiles decrease the temperature underground. So, in a way, we want to try and keep as natural of a floor as we can. Early on, we're not really going to be able to do that, sadly, because we are going to need to have uh, a stable flooring to put the food down on, but that won't always be the case. Now, speaking about that, we've got uh, the research bench up and running, and this game deals with research in a bit of a different way to most games of its ilk, in that when you research something, you don't just click on a research um, item and then someone will stand at the research bench until they've worked out that thing. Instead, 
you want to produce textbooks, or, or rather chronicles, textbooks, and then thesis. These are the, the tiers of research. And then each research costs a certain amount of that type of book to be unlocked. When you unlock a research, you don't consume the book, however. In a kind of hand-wavy, suspension of disbelief way, that book is now filled with text about that topic. And it is from that book that the rest of your people are going to be able to perform whatever that is. So, for example, Architecture, which unlocks wooden beams. Once I've got 15 books, it, it, uh, don't question it, okay? Making these wooden beams, it is, it, it is a pinnacle of engineering of the time. And it takes 15 chronicles to document how someone makes a wooden support to hold up a roof. That, don't question it, it's just the way it is. Uh, but if for some reason those books were to decay, be stolen or destroyed, then we would go into research debt. I don't believe we would lose access to this research, but we would have to re replace the books that we had lost before we could start accruing books to unlock a future research. So we do need to keep these books safe. But on that note, uh, I believe this is counting unused books. I'm going to put in 30. We will always try to maintain 30 blank books that I can use for whatever research I particularly want to. Now, Beatrim is uh, doing a good job over here. Almost got uh, this area opened up. How are things going? We've got some ash pile over there as well. There we go. That's all we need to place down our stairs. Now, if we have a look for the stairs... Um well, there is clay around. Uh, this is the what the wooden stair would look like. Or we can go for the clay stair right there. And I think the clay stair is, is probably a little bit more fitting for the look that we're going for. So we're going to set that down and hopefully one of our peeps will get to that right away. And whilst they're considering that, there's a couple of other things that I would like to work on. Namely, I would like to work on the defences around here. This is where we defended from the attackers who were coming to take Beatrim away. And I see no reason to change that up just yet. We're certainly not going to build a dedicated uh, structure and it's, we're probably a little ways away from having an enclosed space with proper defences. So instead, we're going to use wooden merlins. Now, a wooden stockade have offered valid protection from ingr ingress down the ages. Indeed, they have. Now, you can either place them on top or a side of a uh, very uh, useful comment was left just reminding me about that, just in case I'd forgotten. But it's worth repeating uh, that you can build them away from a, a wall. So, for example, there. And it will leave the holes available for your archers to shoot directly down. If you build it there, your archer will have to stand behind it and thus will not have clear sight of that area. You can consider them uh, killing holes if you want. Uh, I forget the correct name for it. I do apologize. I feel rather ignorant for that. Let's uh, build that out there. But this will allow our archers to shoot straight down. And uh, look, we're going to get this in out of, the, out of the way because I remember from the first season, uh, the first series rather, there was a lot of... Uh, energetic debate, let's say, in the comments, about what these are. Okay, one of these is a Merlon. Technically, this is actually a crenellation because there's two. But the the, the large um, uh, solid defenses, the, the wooden stakes in this case, but uh, if this was made of wood or, or stone, it would be the, uh, the large protrusion. That, in the singular, is a Merlon. If you have a couple of Merlons together in a sequence, they become part of a fortification known as a crenellation. The, the lower platform, I believe it's called a crenin, the space above that, the negative space between two Merlons is abrasion. And there you are, now you know. If, if there's ever a question on whether it's a Merlon, whether it's a crenellation, the defensive structure as a whole is a crenellation. The individual protrusions that people can hide behind and then kind of peek out from to fire an arrow, that is a Merlon. And hopefully that's going to clear up this debate for the ages, he says, knowing it absolutely won't. And uh, even on this video, there's probably going to be some people flapping in the comments about what is the correct way to refer to this. Now, I've got three tiles here and a space there. We're going to slowly dig this area up. It will take me some time because I need to do this one at a time. Uh, previously, if you dug a tile, uh, like a large tile like this, they could A, either get themselves trapped, or B, they could cause materials to fall down into the, uh, onto the floor below, which would in turn make it difficult for you to 
perform any further building. So if we do this slowly, and considering there's somewhere for them to take the material as soon as they dig it up, hopefully we'll see that with Beatrum. They will immediately decide to haul that dirt away. There we go. Thank you very much, Beatrum. And by the time he's done that, we'll uh, start digging again. Now, this is going to be our stairs down, and then we're going to have a door right at the bottom there. What on earth were you just thinking about? Um, chalices and gold, I think. But uh, it was a purple chalice. Was that chalice purple because it was full of wine, perhaps? And was the gold, in fact, the golden golden wheat porridge? I, I have no idea. But Beatrum is hungry. And to be fair, digging uh, digging a stairs down is probably hungry work. Right, we want a clay, uh, clay stair going about there all the way down. And there we have it. Right, now on this level, in fact we'll come up a little bit more, we are going to want to dig through here. Now we're going to want to dig a little ways in. Now there is a bit of a, a trick with uh, digging cellars and that is, first and foremost, like I said, it doesn't only matter how deep the room is, it matters what's above the room. And by putting a solid layer of natural tile of highly insulating dirt well um, I, I say highly insulating I, I guess in the gaming sense it is a, a whole solid tile of dirt is going to be very good protection from the heat that's directly above it which is the kitchen but uh, using the term insulation I feel does does sometimes confuse some people so in this case we want to insulate the cold space from the hot space that's going to be outside of it so that's why insulation is uh, is important but we're going to want to dig out uh, probably this much space is good enough but you also want to put about two tiles of wall between the room and anywhere else outside because it seems to care a little bit about that the, the space beyond the wall. So having a double thick wall removes that uh, insulation penalty. So this should give us a pretty good place for us to move down all of our uh, food gubbins. Now it's going to take them a little while to get all of that done, so I'm going to leave you to it. Beatrum is already doing a little bit of research. Very, very nice. But I'm not going to leave you doing that entirely. We now want to work on getting you guys a place to worship. Uh, let's have a think. It doesn't need to be a very large area. In fact, it probably shouldn't be. Uh, let's have a space with maybe room for eventual expansion to a comfortable two shrines. A shrine is a two by one structure. A uh, window there, for example. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll bring it out about this far. We'll even have a double door. Can't say fair in that. Nice, nice fancy structure for you. There you go. Pop in some windows as well. Now, it's not the, the most interesting of shapes, I grant you, but it doesn't need to be right now. This is going to be a very, very modest little place for our peeps to uh, practice their faith. To that end, we're going to need to chop down some more trees so that we've got the necessary materials for that. Let's uh, get all of these trees. Wow, that crow was loud, my lord. Uh, there we go. Also... If I sound uh, like uh, I lose my train of thought a little bit here and there, I do apologize. I've got new headphones, you see, and these ones have active noise cancellation. And uh, a consequence of that is that uh, I'm not hearing my own voice coming back to me the way I usually do with my, my non-active noise cancelling headphones. They're a very nice pair of headphones. I'm very happy to have upgraded. But uh, not being able to hear the, the, uh, the rumble of my own voice as I talk is causing a bit of cognitive dissonance. I hope you will forgive me if I sound like I'm stumbling over my words a little bit more in this and possibly the next episode or two. That is the reason why. Uh, but hopefully I'll uh, be able to adapt to that nice and quickly. Right, our peeps have got a fair bit of work to do. It is the day nine of our first winter and I'm going to pass a little bit of time until they've got at least uh, more of this structure ready. Okay, there we go. We've built the shell. Well, I haven't put a roof on it yet, but we'll get to that straight away. Uh, for an Oak Brethren uh, ritual room, I kind of want to go for more of a natural look. So instead of the th the straw, I'm going to go for the wicker roof. Uh, we're going to place this down. We'll go lengthways, sure. We'll pop that down there. There are lots of different ways we can play around with the roofs at this point, and I'm very eager to get to the point where we're building more buildings and can have a, a different kind of style and theming for the roofs as we go. I want both of these windows closed because it is actually quite bitterly cold at the moment. And furthermore, I'm going to place down a floor. We'll go with wicker floor here as well, I think. Even though the uh, thermal insulation is much higher on the wood floor, I think we're going to go for a wicker floor again to have a bit more of a natural feel for this room. Uh, beyond that, once that's built, and I'm going to wait for that to be built first, simply because I don't want to uh, uh, 
prevent them being able to put a floor below the the actual uh, shrine itself. Uh, we will then add in maybe some torches or braziers. I'm not sure if we're going to go with a brazier in there or not. Uh, further to that, if we have a look over here, we can see this is going to decompose in 18 days. Part of that is because, of, well, a large part of it is because of the weather. Uh, we could reduce that a little bit by putting a floor down, but I don't really think we need to. There's an awful lot of sticks there, and we will be using an awful lot of sticks on an awful lot of things, so I shouldn't imagine that's going to be too much of a problem. Right, we're going to want an Oak Brethren Shrine. Uh, we could make it out of stone. Uh, no, this is a whole wooden building, and I do quite like trying to make the buildings feel uh, thematically appropriate for what they're being used for. Uh, I guess we could go with braziers in here, but if we do, I'm going to want two of them. Uh, do we have... Yeah, we got enough clay, I think. So we're going to pop two braziers in. There we go. Well, that can't say fairer than that. Now, let's have a quick look at the roof. Uh, we've got a very simple-looking roof. Let's bring this down a little bit. Actually, bring it all the way down. There we go. Have something a little bit more like that, I think. There we are. Actually, do we really want that much of a, a slant there? I'm not even sure that we do. Um, no, I think we're going to keep it like that. It almost looks like a little bit of a hat. I like it. Uh, we'll go with that one for now. Right, what are you guys up to? Beatrum is back to digging, which is quite nice. Let's have a look down there. How much of the room have you dug out? A uh, decent ways so far. Okay, we're going to place down our door. Now, you want to try and avoid putting down too many doors. For the, much the same reason you don't want to put down too many floors. Underground, this game kind of uses a, well, it gamifies the system from what I understand, and the floors will actively heat a, a cold room. Doors will actively heat a cold room as well. That's why you want to try and keep it as natural of a surface as possible, or at least that used to be the case. If that has been, uh, has been changed, and do let me know in the comments. Now, with all of this done, have you actually finished the shrine yet? No, not quite yet. It won't take too long, though. Once you're done with that, I imagine you're immediately going to start uh, worshipping. Well, I should uh, hope so, anyway. Uh, has that got a wicker floor? Yes, it does. There we go. There we are. The shrine is going up, and I can only imagine that Tubman and Beatrum will promptly begin worshipping. There we go. They're a little bit sad right now, though. Let's have a quick look at that. Why is that? Your religious activities were very, very low, sadly. So uh, you were full-on lacking. But there we are. Religious activities have now jumped way up, and you should, I would imagine, be relatively happy with that. Let's have a quick look. Religious needs fulfilled plus... Five. Very, very happy with that, in fact. Okay, well, that's uh, done a very, very good uh, bit of work for you. But I am a little bit concerned about the future defences for our settlement. Now, we've got this wonderful area here, and I do plan on building uh, across this, having a proper bridge, maybe, maybe even going more for having the settlement on a much larger, uh, much more fortified passageway between these two sides, maybe this uh, long, dried-out river here. But for now... I don't want to get too involved with building a tiny little walled in settlement. I, I would prefer to have some fortified structures that our defenders can protect themselves from rather than trying to completely enclose the keep, at least for now. So to that end, we've got this for the time being. Maybe something else over here or maybe something down here would also help with that. Uh, now, we do have ladders which will allow us to climb a, a turret in a much better way than previously because you had to have a certain size of turret just to fit the amount of stairs you would need to be able to go all the way up. You couldn't have, for example, circular stairs. The ladders now fit that purpose, so we can have fairly tight defensible turrets that our people can attack from or defend from, as the case may be. Uh, how is the work going down there, Beatrim? I'm actually uh, quite concerned about getting our food in here. Let's have a look at the temperature. It's currently six degrees inside. That's not great. It's two degrees outside. Uh, though it is getting cooler as we uncover more and more natural tile. If we go up here, 16 degrees in the kitchen, 12 degrees in here next to the kitchen. It's uh, an unheated room, but it is uh, beside a heated room and beneath a heated room. So that is going to be playing uh, a part to that. But uh, I think uh, the little place we've got going down here is coming along. In fact, I may dig this a little bit further in. Uh, let me just see how far down we can go. We can go about there. I think we should be fine. There we are. That'll uh, give us plenty of cooling in this space as a consequence. We want the temperature to be about mm, a bit lower than 5 degrees. Obviously, the lower the better, but 
below five degrees is about all you need to be able to maintain uh, most uh, perishables throughout a year. Now, on the topic again of, because uh, it's going to take a little while for Beatrum to finish there, I think we should maybe think of either putting up uh, just some sort of archer tower or a proper proper turret, but it'll be made of wood, so it's not really going to be that defensible. Give me a few moments to puzzle something together, and I will bring you back when I've got a plan in place. And there we go. Uh, the top is currently highlighted as a, as a warning because it's two stories tall, so they won't be able to build that until they've secured the second floor and they can uh, actually reach the roof but we've got a uh, the ghosted image actually does a really good job of portraying what i felt uh we've got a fairly simple uh turret here we've got some windows on the lower floor if it's particularly cold uh people can be down here to keep warm and we'll put a brazier in there and then on the top floor then we've got uh crenellations that people can use for additional protection and of course to fire straight down on anyone perhaps trying to break through the door there. Uh, I may in fact get rid of that wall and have a, have a little a little cozy over here, maybe even pull the door forward just a bit, just so that we've actually got a bit of a nicer shape to it. You know what? I've convinced myself that that is the right thing to do. So let's uh, quickly do that. We'll put a uh, floor up top. We of course want it to be matching in the, uh, the shape there. And we will also bring these out to the side here. Uh, these ones can be straight up, that's fine. We'll have a little door right here, and then we'll pop a tiny little wooden roof over it. I think that'll actually look pretty cool. There we go. That'll be our little guard tower. Uh, hopefully, this will do us uh, quite well in the next fight, uh, however long that might take to happen. Now, we'll likely get another person by then, so we also probably need to start thinking about building uh, a place for them to sleep. But let's head on down. How much room has been down down here? I keep pulling Beatrum away. I am so sorry, Beatrum. You've got a very important job down there, and I keep distracting you with other jobs. But uh, this early on, everything is an important job, I feel. So uh, we'll hopefully be able to get a decent amount of all of this done. Now, Beatrum is off to gather more building supplies, and uh, Tubman as well. Both of them are focused on construction. If we uh, look at their schedules again, or rather their jobs again, uh, hauling is a relatively low uh, low priority. Uh, where is construction? That's fine view. That is, uh, well, actually, I say that Tubman will still do construction before hauling, but uh, they are the same priority level. So uh, that we should see this entire structure built before we start hauling all of the stone from downstairs. And in terms of digging, which would have been, well, I would have imagined maybe construction. Oh, that'll come under mining, of course. Uh, yeah, that, that won't be done for a while, sadly. Okay, they have finished digging out the uh, whole room down here. As you can see, the temperature is starting to drop a, a decent amount. We've got um, my, sub five degree temperatures inside. Now that is going to change the moment I place down the floor, which is quite sad, but eventually we'll be able to move away from this. Uh, for now, I'm just going to go ahead and place down a three by three area, and then we will pop down a storage pile. We're not going to need much more than this for now. Uh, clear all. I want this to be a very high priority. I want all types of food in here. Uh, do we want to put fermenting? No, we don't because fermenting needs heat and it should hopefully be very, very cold down here. But I will also bring the medicine in here as well. So hopefully that is going to draw items away from this stockpile, which has got a very low priority and everything should instead be stored inside. Now, uh, we will allow them to finish moving things in so they're stopping going back and th forth through the door, and then we'll check on how uh, how long the items in there will last for. Now, as you can see, we have made some solid progress on the defensive tower, but we it is now time to get some more wood so that we can finish off the crenellation. There we go. We'll also go at that one, me as well. But uh, we've got what looks like uh, coming up to sunset, I would say. It got very suddenly bright there for it to be sunset, but I guess one of the clouds must have moved away from the uh, from the sun. But uh, for now, things are moving ahead of pace. Research is taking a phenomenally long time, and a very large part of that is because they, A, haven't been given much time to do research, and B, they're doing it slower anyway because it's outside. And before anyone comments, yes, I know that this does create the potential for enemies to be stood here and not visible from attackers over there, but I am not 100% on that. I would like to, to um, see if an archer from up here will still get sight on someone stood in front of this doorway, 
or not from this position. Uh, if it turns out that that is going to be the case, we can easily just remove this and move the door back inside. From inside though, it does give us a very nice option because normally if that door were to break and someone were to be stood there, a spearman behind and I think on these three tiles and then a melee attacker there would all be able to attack one defender over here. Having this little uh, corridor that they have to enter should reduce the potential amount of attackers to just two. I'll see how that one goes. Uh, but uh, of course I could also make the corridor an internal thing to prevent uh, blocking line of sight for any archers on top. We'll see how, how all of that uh, pans out, but I do quite like the look of it, I must say. That looks very, very, uh, very good to me. Uh, we can, of course, pop in a brazier as well. I think we should. Uh, a couple of places where people can keep warm is always useful. Uh, let's go ahead. Uh, do we have enough for a clay brazier? We do, and we might as well just pop one. All right, bang, smack in the middle. We'll make that a medium intensity, or maybe even just a low intensity. We don't need it to be too much. 7.5 degrees inside. These are both on medium, I think. Over here, this one is currently set up to high because of how cold it is, and that's got a balmy 12 degrees. And in the bedroom, if we uh, turn off roofs, we've got this one on high as well, I'm fairly certain, yeah, and it is also 12 degrees, so that's all going relatively well. But you're now starting to see green poking through the floor. Very, very interesting, and that's not just because we're traipsing across that area. We've got another snowstorm, but this is the last day of winter that we're going to have to deal with. I'm quite surprised that we haven't seen any further events, actually. Uh, what just happened there? Food reserves on stockpile low. Well, uh, that is possibly because it's being moved downstairs? No, it is not. Why is that, then? Uh, let's have a quick check in here. Uh, we've dropped a below the recommended amount. Let me just go ahead and tell them to stop storing food in here because although this is a lower t uh, priority area, I would like it to just always be stockpiled downstairs if possible um, because I'll be much more likely to notice that we've run out of room if there's just random piles of food in the kitchen than a bunch of food in an otherwise already busy stockpile. So we'll move that out. I'll leave medicine there, though. The food is the main thing that I'm concerned about there. Right, have we finished this? No, we have not. Have we run out of wood? We might have. Let's see what Tubman can do with this last uh, satchel full of wood. Yeah, we're definitely going to need a, li a little bit more. All right, but we're not going to need too much. So I think just two or three. Uh, let's go for four, I guess. Uh, we'll be good. All right, Beatrim now considered Tubman a friend. The reason? Small talk. Oh, that's actually quite lovely. Uh, hopefully that makes you uh, particularly happy. In fact, let's have a look at uh, Beatrum. Uh, a nice meal, medium expectations, slept in modest quarters, religiously fulfilled, initial optimism. Doesn't really mention their friend, but I imagine that would uh, come into play should uh, Tupman die, sad to say. Uh, let's have a look down here. The brazier is all set up. We'll leave that on medium heat for the time being. It's currently 11 degrees inside. It is 13 degrees outside. Winter is practically over, but it's still below 5 degrees down here, and that is fantastic. Let's have a look at this. So that rots in 44 days due to the temperature. It needs to be below 0 degrees for it to uh, completely remove its uh, rot there, sadly. It decomposes in one year. So 44 days is almost an entire year by itself, thinking about it. Uh, how about you? 13 days here. That will decompose a lot faster. The bread is never going to rot. Never going to rot. Uh, the stews also never going to rot. Interesting. So we really do want to be prioritizing stews and breads over just roasting meats. And the herbs, likewise, will never rot at all. There is a small amount of nutrition in that. That is quite amusing. All right. Okay. Well, we've uh, managed to build up a fair bit to the, the defense of the colony so far. We've added the defenses around our original fighting position. We've added a, a specific defensive structure over here. So what's next on the agenda? I would say trying to move out to a... Uh, Getting an extra bedroom so they can have private quarters and additional... Oh, there. Tubman now considered be a trimmer friend. That's fantastic. Pleasant conversation. Now you both consider each other friends. Marvellous. I think adding a separate storage space so that we can expand this one out to a proper dining area would be wonderful. And if we could add some more quarters... 
that would also allow us to move these quarters away and perhaps just have this as a, as a research area. And I think that would be a very good idea. Let's go ahead and build this out of here. I'm probably going to be going for more of a village design with this playthrough. Uh, somewhat similar to we, what we did with Woven Tales, but Woven Tales had uh, much larger single structures that, that were all kind of added together to, to one large building. So the Great Hall had the kitchens, had the brewery right next to it, had the chapel right next to it. All of the houses were connected in a little terrace. I want to go for more individual multi-story buildings with this particular playthrough. We'll see how that one pans out, though. So first and foremost, let's uh, decide on the space that we're going to be using for making a nice big uh, workshop. And perhaps we should also consider making this workshop uh, sorry, uh, the storage area, a workshop. So uh, let's start at the back here and see what we can do. Okay, it is morning on day one of spring. And uh, I've laid down the, the groundwork for a fairly large room. Now, I'm not sure exactly what we're going to be pl putting in this room just yet. This could be our common room. Um, I would like to have the storage somewhere around here. I'm thinking maybe a ladder down and trying to use that vertical space so we can have a fairly uh, generous storage underneath this structure. So maybe having this one as a workshop does make the most sense. We could have a couple of different uh, workshop buildings in here for the time being. Again, I I really want to go for a village feel with this uh, with this playthrough. So what we will likely aim for uh, in in the future is having a specific building for each type of industry, and perhaps having the living quarters for those workmen being around that particular building. But uh, at the moment, with only two people, eh, probably a third on the the way relatively soon. Uh, this will serve multiple. Uh, functions for the now just so that we we don't spend a lot of time building lots of pokey little things and then having to struggle to try and expand it as the village grows now let's go ahead and chop down those trees we're gonna need an awful lot of material to finish this building but I'm relatively happy with where things are going all right spring Spring arrived in Frostgrave. As the sun warmed, the sleeping ground, vegetation began to grow. It was the perfect time to sow crops for the coming year. Well, that is assuming we have crops to sow now, isn't it? Uh, also, uh, could you please remove that hind? Uh, is this... Yeah, that's a... It's a deer. It's... it's uh, 13 dick. Uh, okay, maybe not then. Let's not go for that hind just yet. Have we got any other animals around that we could hunt instead? I do need some extra meat, I think. We've got what looks like a young deer over there. Oh, no, actually, that one's uh, a year old. Maybe we could go and hunt that one then. Uh, let's see, is there anything else? I mean, if a wolf has is left a carcass around, I might go for that, but it doesn't look like they have. No, oh, sure, we'll go for this uh, wild deer over there. That'll be fine. There we go. Now then, let's consider where we're going to be putting a farm, because I do agree that uh, putting together some sort of cropland will be important. Maybe something around here? If we have a, uh, a think about farming, though that is going to require agriculture, and we are very, very far behind the curve when it comes to all of this, which I'm a little bit concerned about, if I'm honest. Uh, let's, in fact, let's move that over here, because at least it'll be within a structure at that point. Uh, it'll take us a little bit of time to flesh this out properly, though. All right, let's uh, see about getting all of that wooden, if possible. I'm quite happy to have some extra defenses, though we are moving this back a little bit, so that is going to reduce the defensive uh, capabilities. But I'm thinking having a little walkway, having the crenellations move along, and then just kind of out around the side of this building will afford some additional protection there. We can still have people uh, attacking from up here. That, that shouldn't be too much of a problem for us. The first rains of spring have arrived. Uh, this room is almost finished at this point. I'm going to need to throw down some flooring, of course. Uh, let's go for the sticks. We've got plenty of sticks around, and a wicker floor is good enough for the time being. So let's get that in place. And then on top, we're going to need to expand this out so we can actually start working on the roof as well. So that means, sadly, saying goodbye to these and uh, setting this one up again to be... Uh, built out in that direction. We'll build a regular wooden floor across to here, build out the crenellations around it, and then have a second large structure up on top that we're going to be able to use for whatever uh, purpose we really fancy. Okay, and the final bit of work is now being done, uh, well, both on the floor and the ceiling here, along with the uh, crenellations that will... Uh, provide a bit of a defense along this walkway. Not really sure we're actually going to need it, but you know what, just to uh, 
finish that off properly. We'll add it in over there as well. I'll uh, make quite a, a nice little defensive bridge, I think, between these two buildings. Now, the bench, the research bench has already brought, uh, been brought in. They still do not have a lot of time to work on research as yet, and that's probably going to continue for a little while, especially since construction takes uh, a very big priority from both of them. But I'm pretty happy with where we've managed to bring things at this point. We're in day two of spring. We've still got a couple of things outside that we're going to want to uh, bring in as quickly as we can, especially so that we can make the bread and uh, stew out of the uh, the food that we've got in the cellar. I don't want that to be roasted meat and or carcasses and raw meat for uh, very long. The roasted meat's already been eaten, which is good. Uh, this, the raw meat is going to rot in 11 days. The carcass is going to rot in 42. So that one's actually completely fine. We're not going to have to worry about that one one little bit. But uh, the bread will decompose just due to temperature in 26 days. Uh, if we can get this room a lot colder, that would be ideal. But uh, it might take a little bit more work for that, sadly. And on the third day of spring, the building is complete. That took us far more time than I would like to admit, but uh, we have ourselves a new room. It's a rather modest spare room. Uh, the uh, research table has been set up in there as well. We also need a little bit of heat, I would say. Let's go ahead and put down a brazier right about there. But all that remains now for our peeps is to get in everything that has just been left outside on the floor and of course to uh, get a bit of uh, rest here and there let's have a look down in this room down here we've got some food making its way in i do believe oh that was the carcass cut up to get some more raw meat fantastic and uh, more straw as well to be uh, to be stored up i'm pretty happy with the way things have gone though I hope you are too. Here's a final look of uh, Frostgrave at the moment. We've got a defensive turret. Not much of one, I suppose, but it'll do in a pinch. We've also got a religious building, a little Oak Brethren shrine. We have our original uh, sleeping quarters and storage room as well as a kitchen. We now have a much larger uh, workshop area where we've placed our... First, research table, though, again, we do need to get some work on that. Uh, I might need to jostle around some of the priorities. And, of course, most importantly, we have a cellar down here, which is managing to keep the temperature at a very, very uh, cool 4.5 degrees, despite outside temperatures being 17 and 18 in places. This should mean that our food will last for a good long while. Hopefully, we are making some roasted meat, so we do need to get in some berries so that they can uh, make proper stews and such. Uh, there are plenty of berry bushes around the place that we will hopefully get out there and start harvesting from. Now, once research is underway properly, once we've gotten through architecture, the first thing on our list will be agriculture so that we can actually get some farms down. And then uh, beyond that, uh, it's anyone's guess. I guess we'll have to see how the story of Frostgrave has been developing. But that is going to be it from me. I hope you have enjoyed and will be joining me for the next. As always, I look forward to any feedback you have down below. But until next time, do take care, everyone.